Hey everybody, Richard Gaming Guy here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Nintendo Entertainment System console on a modern day TV. So let's get started. All right, so here we have our Nintendo Entertainment System console, our AV connection cable, our power supply cable, and then our Nintendo Entertainment System controller right here. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lift up this flap right here in the front of our console, and this is where our cartridge games go. So here I have Super Mario Brothers along with Duck Hunt. Now on a modern day TV, we're not gonna be able to play Duck Hunt with the uh, Zapper controller, but we are gonna be able to play Super Mario Brothers with this controller that you see right here. So the way that this loads in, you're gonna see a little arrow located right here. You're just gonna flip that around and this slides right in just like that. So we're gonna go down here, I'll lift this up so you can see, slides right into place, pushes in, and then you're just going to, where this little indent is, we're just gonna push directly down. That's all we need to do. So we're just gonna flip this cover back over and we're ready to start making our connections and power this on. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our AV cable. So this particular cable here has three colors on the ends. So you can see we have both ends exactly the same here. We have yellow, red, and white. With this particular one, we're only gonna be using white and red. So the yellow one's just gonna dangle, but I'm gonna show you guys how this gets set up because this is where the majority of the confusion starts with the NES console on modern day TVs. So I'm gonna be using this converter right here for the sake of the video and also the TV that I have is a brand new TV and it actually doesn't have these three colored ports on it. So I have to use this in order to transform the AV connection over to HDMI. These are really inexpensive. They come in extremely handy if you're gonna be doing a lot of retro gaming. They, this one cost me I think about 12 bucks. So I'll put a direct link to over to Amazon to pick up one of these if you're interested, if you even need them in the description of this video. So just drop down there if you're interested in picking up one of these. I've been using this particular one for about two years now. I've never had any issues with it. So it's a great price and it delivers a great level of performance. So the only downside is it's powered by a USB connection. So the other end looks like this. You have to plug this into either a computer, a power outlet that has a USB, or you can plug it directly into the back of your TV if you have a USB port on the back side. So I actually have a USB port on the back side of my TV, but I have one in the outlet right here. I'm just gonna plug it into that. That's all we need to do here in terms of powering this. So I'm gonna actually take the HDMI cable from my TV and I'm gonna plug that into the HDMI side here. Now, again, if you don't need one of these and you have these three colored ports on the back side of your TV, you don't need this. You don't have to worry about HDMI cable or anything like that. But I wanna cover all the bases for everybody in the event that you have a TV like mine that just doesn't offer these three connections. So I'll show you right here rather than on the back side of my TV for, for convenience, but the way this is going to connect is, and this again is where it gets confusing for most people, you would think that you just match up the colors. In this case, we actually don't. Red is gonna match up perfectly, so the red is gonna go into the red, just like that. And then I told you we're gonna leave the yellow dangling. We're not gonna connect that. We're gonna take the white, and we're going to put it into the yellow. So the white here is empty, and then of course the yellow cable is empty too and just dangling. So that is the connection here. It's also going to be the connection on the side of our NES console. So I'm gonna set this end aside. This is all set up and ready to go. I'm gonna come over here and grab this end and we're gonna flip our NES console over on its side. Over here on the right hand side, you can see we have a red connection, which is audio and then a yellow connection, which is video. So again, red's gonna go with red and now white is gonna go with yellow. So white cable with the yellow port. Just make sure that those are pushed in. Don't overly force them or anything because these are pretty old. That's all we need to do in terms of our AV connection. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our power supply. This end is gonna obviously go into a power outlet. And this end is going to plug into the backside of our console. So I'm gonna flip this over. Before I put this into place here, I wanna mention that don't go off of the logic of if you have one of these power supplies lying around and it fits into the back of an NES console that it's meant to go there. That's not the case. Make sure that you have a Nintendo Entertainment System power supply. Only use that with the NES console. If you do go with the generic one, just make sure that it's meant to go inside of an NES console. 
You don't want to take like a Sega one and put it in here because the voltage is going to be different. You don't want to grab one that you just have lying around the house because the voltage may be different. So just rule of thumb, just to be safe, even if the voltage matches up, just make sure that you're using a power supply that is intended to be used with a Nintendo Entertainment System console. So we're going to plug that directly into the back. And now I'm going to just flip this around so you can see there's a little toggle switch here, right here. And there's two channels. There's CH3, channel 3, or CH4, channel 4. The way that we're setting this up today, we're going to make sure that it's pushed all the way over to the right-hand side so it says CH4. So that is the setting. Just make sure, again, all the way over to the right-hand side if you're looking at it like you are here in this video. So we can turn this around. I'm going to just move those cables towards the back so they're out of the way. Set this down. So now we're going to connect our controller. So I'll grab the end of my NES controller right here. Looks just like this. And that's going to go into the first controller port. If you're using two controllers, then go ahead and put the second one in. I'm just going to be doing one today. So I've got that into the first one. That's all I need to do. Now, if we flip the NES console up, you're going to see the first button here is a power button. Go ahead and hit the power button. It's going to light up red right here. The button's going to stay pushed in capture. And you can see on my screen now, this game has booted up perfectly. We have Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt up on the screen. So if we take our controller here and we actually maneuver this, you can see we're able to switch between Super Mario Brothers at the top where we have Mario there kind of jogging and we bring it down and we have our duck from Duck Hunt flying. So we're gonna select Super Mario Brothers here. I'm going to confirm it with the start button and it boots right into Super Mario Brothers. So since I only have one controller plugged in right now, I only have the one player game option. Uh, if I had two, then we can go down and do two player. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and we're gonna load right up into our game. So let's test this out. I'm just running through it here. I'm not trying to get all that good stuff. Just testing this out, making sure everything performs properly. And we are good to go here. Everything is working great. Again, that's not how I typically play this game, but we are able to jump through here, fully test out the game that's loaded in here and see that everything is performing perfectly right now. All right, guys, you saw firsthand exactly how I set up this NES console on the modern day TV. If you need that direct link to that AV to HDMI converter, drop down to the description of this video and I put a link in there to take you over to Amazon where you can get some additional information on that converter. But it is extremely reliable really high quality, especially for that really low price point. So that's pretty much everything that we need to go over here for setting up the NES console on a modern day TV. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below or reach out to me directly on my website, www.retrogamingguy.com, where I have tons of retro games, uh, consoles and accessories available. So that's gonna do it again for this video. If you guys enjoyed the content here, be sure to hit the thumbs up on the video. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching.